you have questions on that? All right. You'll notice I have a value of one in there. If you put zero and you have automatic compression releases, you just turn them off. If you put a one in, you just turn them on. That's not okay. Rear cylinder timing offset. You talk to different tuners, they do it different ways. Me, I don't offset the rear cylinder timing. I treat each cylinder kind of independently, you know, and you play with that, you do timing offset on the rear. You know what, as advanced as fuel injection is now, I, I, I kind of tune to engine temperatures, okay? Offset the rear timing, I find it more effective just to play with fuel. You know, and there are tuners that disagree. It's a different style. A lot, it's very common for guys to offset the rear by two degrees. Um, if, if it can help cool the rear cylinder down a little bit, but I honestly, guys, I don't even mess with that part of it. I leave it at zero. Experiment with it. That's a great part. You may find it. it you may have a bike that it might be a little easier to start. You know, but I, I don't really, I don't really mess with that. Any, anybody else play with that or any theory or? So I'm open on that, but I've tried it a ton of different ways, and I, I don't really see a difference, honestly. I so, had a carburetor once, but exactly, but not on, not on fuel injection. Yeah. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it where it is. Uh, vehicle speed frequency, of course, you can change it. six gear ratio. We go warm up time. Uh, twist grip idle. All that stuff. <coughs> don't worry about it. Okay. You will see this number change. The nominal IAC steps. All right, essentially that's calibrating our idle speed. All right, if we have checked automatic nominal IC update mode, you will see that number change during the tuning process. But as simple as possible, you open up the map that's appropriate for the year model, nothing else matters. Estimate the horsepower, put in the injector size, and hit OK. You've essentially created a base map. Okay, now, how many of you have used our carbureted ignitions? Okay, so you, you know, understand how the initial slope settings and the advanced slopes, all, all that stuff? Okay, now, one of the steps in creating a map, obviously, we're going to look at the advanced table. We have advanced tables in here. You're, you've seen these before. If you have, you have programmed our ignitions. Okay, you also notice. Well, I've got it in metric, so we're looking at um, up to 100 kPa. Yeah, we're on the metric side. If, if we were using the 300 kPa uh, version of this for turbos and prochargers and superchargers, you would have adjustment up to 300 kPa there for timing control. Right? All right. Now, Since you've used our carbureted ignitions before, if you, if you have an engine that you're familiar with, you recognize those? Yep. So we're running 10 and a half to one early intake close, nice little stroker motor. We're gonna set it on, what, three and probably two to slow the slope down a little bit and update. We now have the exact same curve that you have in your carbureted ignitions. So it's, it's, if you build a lot of carbureted twin cams and you're using the TC88s, TC88As, and you have an ignition curve that you like, throw it in there. Okay. Now even after you create your own, you can still come in and do some manual, if you don't like that one, click, let's advance it. A little bit of a change. Basically all we're doing is increasing our initial timing by one. We can change our advanced slope and hit update, be a little more aggressive with it. If we don't like it, we can still come in and edit and click and drag <coughs> and look around what we're dealing with. Okay. Ignition tables, any questions? All right. Most of the time, the ignition tables that we have in our map. <coughs> Are going to be fairly close. If you're a real tuner and you want to get that perfect balance of fuel and timing, obviously you can do it. But nine times out of ten, they're really close. They're really good. 
Okay. No questions? All right, so we've got time. Uh, we're going to close that. Now let's look at fuel. Here's the AFR ticket. All right. The settings that we put in, you'll notice these are pretty, these are definitely on the fat side, right? Down here we're at an idle at around 13.5, and if we go into a cruising area, we're still around 13.5. Now this particular map is not a base map. This was a map that I created for a, um, a pro charger bike. I had to run that one a little fat, but it was it was over 200 horse on 106, so it was it was uh, a pretty nasty little thing. Um, our um, our base maps most of the time your cruising air fuel ratio is going to be 13.8. Idle is going to be around 13.2. Wide open throttle is going to be be around 12.8. Okay, that is a little rich, and we do that on purpose. All right, you can use it. The gal get somewhere around 38 miles to a gallon, give or take. If 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 you really want to trim it down, you can lean it out a little bit. Okay, and it's not really going to hurt. Anything. All right, so we just kind of built a safeguard in there. So you can pretty much use your base map, leave your AFR table alone. Okay, any questions? All right. Let's review. Maxi fuse, stock ECM, place, free air calibration on the O2 <coughs> sensors, install the Wego, we check the twist grip, we check the throttle plate, and we have our numbers. We're up to that point, right? The numbers from the spreadsheet, everybody remember? Communication, or excuse me, edit. Parameters. This corner down here, that's where we enter in the scale factors. That's where we're compensating for all of the issues with the twist grip. Okay. I'll go ahead and plug some numbers. Uh, we've got a full scale, say 939. And this offset of 232. Hit the upload button. Any wait a second. Upload completed. Done. Okay. One other step. Bin number. Key in the bin number and you hit OK. Verify and you hit OK. That's it. What's the purpose of that on VIN? Just a blanket serial lines? Needs to match. Yeah, if well if you don't match the VIN number. Um, when you turn it on, it's going to give you a no VIN <laughs> error. If you ride it 30 miles, you just trash the speed off. You just what? Trash it. Trash the speed Yeah. The, 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 they don't want, they don't, want, don't want to make it easy to change speedos back and forth between bikes. It's an odometer thing. Okay. All right. So, it's taken it be longer to explain what to do than what it actually takes to do it. All right, so I'm going to run through in real time how I would actually do this if I had a bike set here. Okay, barring it, <coughs> installing everything. All right, so we do it real time. We go to data link, communications. There's our twist grip, low voltage level. I write that down. Communications, same thing again. Level at 227. Read it again. Wide open throttle. 929. Communications, test mode, manual.